So I've woken up today amidst all of the Summer Game Fest chaos. Um, just trying to figure out what kind of games I can wishlist on Steam or what I can find. And this is in the top sellers, Army of Ruin, another survivor like for me to try. So I bought it, played a couple runs so far, and I think this might be a sleeper hit. I believe, however, that it was in early access for a while. Um, I have never played this before. I've never, been, never even seen anything about it before, which is interesting because it's now one of the top sellers on new and trending at least. Um, now, uh, I've played a couple runs, as I said, and my first impressions were pretty good. Um, but before we go and play another run, I'm going to go through some upgrades because I've got some currency to spend. Um, and I thought I'd take this time to show you the kind of progression within the game. Uh, this game gives me a really good vibe when it comes to progression. Uh, there seems to be a lot to unlock and a lot to do. So first, I'm just going to upgrade my damage. Cost 100, next is 500. And I can downgrade it as you can see as well. So I think I might just continue to upgrade this just until 20%. And then we can continue with fire rate as well. And that might be it for the moment. I don't know what the max level of these is. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see that I've spent uh, all of my currency from that last run. So let's get into another one. Before I do that, actually, these are the unlocks. Characters, uh, weapons as well. Decent amount of weapons, as you can see. A very decent amount of weapons, as you can see. Trinkets for you to grab during the run. And uh, features as well. These I don't really know too much about. Um, but I'm sure I'll learn more as I play. Anyway, let's just get straight into a run. Oh. Uh, achievements as well, of course. Tons of achievements. 200 and... Well, 559 challenges. Um, but 200 plus achievements on Steam. So, I mean, 559 challenges. That's a lot if you're a completionist. Let's get into a run. Uh, I completed the Defiled Graveyard. So let's move on to Ancient Forest. See how we can do. Uh, last time I played as Saul. I'm going to go with Ariana this time. So with Ariana, her initial attack is um, aimed. So it's just based on where you're looking. And you can... Kill enemies pretty quickly, at least the starting ones with it. Uh, it is a bit finicky. Obviously, you have to wait for it to come off cooldown, and then you can attack with it. So you kind of have to move around, and then aim, and then, and then you know, then it attacks, and then you can take advantage of the XP that, that drops, right? So I'm thinking, you know, I need to get something that uh, is going to help me kill enemies quicker that isn't super aimed. Um, so I'm thinking, I'll go with the throwing axe because it kills the closest enemy. And it seems to bounce around as well. One thing I will say so far, just off my first impressions, is I like the um, I like the art style. It gives me a very like dungeon defenders kind of art style, where like you know it's not really taking itself too super seriously, um, but at the same time, uh, you know it can take itself seriously. It's fun art style. It's clean animation, fun art style, vibrant as well. That's probably the best way to describe it. It's very vibrant. Uh, and I tend to like things that are vibrant, you know, uh, visual distinction in a uh, roguelike or action roguelike is very important and even more so important in a survivor roguelike. Uh, you need to be able to distinguish things on screen and this game seems to do that pretty well. Here's the boss. Now, I know that my ability, let me just get an upgrade here, we'll choose another weapon. My ability is to basically go invincible and I can knock up against these bosses and deal damage, at least that's Ariana's ability. One thing I will say, so far the bosses seem kind of underwhelming. Um, they seem uh, kind of easy to take on, which, uh, you know, isn't necessarily the same in other games, although it is much easier to target bosses in survivor likes. Uh, as soon as you see them, you kind of just go up to them and, and kill them. It's kind of just, you know, you focus on them, all, all the attacks that you can aim, uh, you aim towards them. So they kind of go down quickly in a lot of games, but a lot more quickly than I'm used to here. Maybe something to balance out, but not too much of a fuss. And you saw when I killed the boss as well, I got a chest with a couple upgrades as well. So that's good. We'll go for some overall damage here, I think. I think we've given ourselves enough abilities. But this is uh, the standard... The standard... Uh, oh, knocked up against that spider a little, little bit too much. This is the standard gameplay loop from Survival Axe that you come to expect. So I know that I unlocked the Raven's Wing uh, after completing the last run. Um, I'm not going to choose it because I don't really want to get rid of my XP gain, but we'll go down to the Throwing Axe, I think. But that obviously shows that, you know, obviously as you complete achievements and objectives, challenges, you'll unlock more uh, more to unlock in the run, or more to, more to use in the run, sorry. And that is uh, standard, but it's also great. Very satisfying game loop. More upgrades. I think speed is relatively important from what I can tell. Uh, you can get kind of overrun 
if you're not careful. Um, I was reading the Steam reviews and the consensus was that this game was on the easier side of things, which is, I mean, so far that's par for the course from what I've played. Um, as long as I don't keep knocking up against enemies, these little uh, flying skulls are actually kind of annoying. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know how true that's going to be. Uh, the guy with that Steam review, I think it was one of the top ones, had like 60 hours or something. That tells me that he's kind of experienced and he might be a little bit biased, but for the moment, I kind of have to agree with him with some overall damage. The other thing I've noticed about this game uh, while I'm low on health is that there seem to be a decent amount of areas where you can get health pickups. So there's lots of different things on the ground for you to pick up. It will give you more health back, which is really good because losing too much health in a game like this, you know, to frustrating things or things you can't really avoid uh, is super annoying. But, you know, being able to pick them up or pick health upgrades and, and counteract that is nice. You saw there I could picked up a, you know, basically an insta-kill thing. I killed everything on my screen. I think I might go for experience gain here just because I just killed everything and I kind of want to take advantage of the fact that everything around me just died and I can pick up all the experience. And we might go for some more speed this time around so I can maneuver through these enemies pretty easily. These little floating blue ghosts are a very similar color to the XP orbs, which isn't the best visual distinction, but it is good enough. I wonder what that was. Did that just spawn enemies, I believe, when I stood over that? Interesting. I think it's time to use our ability to get out of this pickle that we're in. Get safe. We've got to go look for some more health. So at least on this map, I can tell that these things here will give you health. And uh, that's always good. So we can go for some more experience, I think. I feel like I undervalue experience games or experience gain in a lot of these kind of games. For example, in Soulstone Survivors, it's something that I should pick up a lot more because uh, the experience gain in Soulstone Survivors drops off quite heavily towards the later stages of the run. And so having more experience gain is a very, very helpful. I don't know what the mathematics, you know, around how worth it, it actually is to, you know, spec into experience gain, but it feels like it's worth it, you know? Being able to get upgrades more quickly it feels like it's worth it. There's another boss that we have to deal with, but as soon as my ability is ready, I'll probably take him on because I can just run through him being fully invulnerable and take him on quite easily. I'm just trying to pick up as many uh, upgrades as I possibly can. My ability's almost ready. This is definitely uh, a lot harder of a stage than the graveyard, the initial one that I played. What does that do? That crown. I wonder. Regardless, let's just run through the boss. Should die pretty quickly. We can claim our upgrades. And move on. Three upgrades this time around. So you get all three of these upgrades in this chest, which is kind of nice. More experience gain as well. Always good. Get some overall damage. I think we're going to need it. Oh, yeah. Look at all these blue orbs. This is perfect. This seems to be getting a little bit more difficult. We might need to emphasize some sort of survivability or AoE so that we can avoid dying through these enemies. Is this a vulnerability? It is. May as well make the most of it while I can. Although I don't know how long it lasts. So also want to be quite careful. Also get gold pickups. Obviously the gold, as you saw, is used to upgrade things outside of a run. Seems to be lots of meta progression in this. I think I'm definitely going to get a second axe here. Because that's my kind of close range AoE that's going to help me with uh, a lot of things. So it looked like that. I could just step over that question mark to spawn a bunch of enemies. Just for extra XP purposes, I, I guess. So maybe it's worth doing that. I also haven't seen any, any XP orbs that tell me I'm getting more XP. Uh, you know, generally XP orbs will kind of change color depending on how much they give you, but it seems like these ones kind of give you a similar amount. I could be wrong and they might just not be, you know, visually distinct, but for the moment they are all the same color. Seems like they give the same amount of XP. Can we kill them during our ability? We absolutely can. Ah, oh, only one upgrade. Unlucky. Well, speed's nice. We'll definitely take that. Uh, let's try carve our way through these enemies. Very important, obviously. I want to grab these uh, pots as much as I can because I, I don't like the amount of health we're on. 
I don't like how many enemies are spawning. The enemies with a yellow border underneath them seem to just be enemies that will drop something for you. Um, there's a couple objectives I have on the left here as well. I'm still unaware of what kind of objectives are going to pop up during a run. For me at least. Um, so let's go find out, shall we? Looks like a chest. Should give me some nice upgrades. Maybe similar chests to what the bosses drop. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. This movement speed is nice. We can just run across the whole map. Very good, very good. Wave 8. Oh my god. Oh my god, all the little wisps just spawned. Now I really have to carve my way through this shit. Holy. Get me up, give me the chest. Ah, yes, more speed. Beautiful. Very good. With my ability ready, I think I might just charge through all of these guys and claim as much XP as I possibly can. Maybe even improve my uh, attack size. Oh, I'm out of invulnerability now. I've got to be careful. One of the... That same Steam review I mentioned earlier said that uh, while this game is easy, it is engaging enough to be, or to, to you know, be worth playing it. Plus, for well, I got it for ten Australian dollars. I can definitely see myself getting multiple hours out of this already. Here we go. Here's all the health. Hopefully, there is a decent enough challenge later on. I also don't know when that review was posted. Whether it was the full release view review or uh, whether early access had some you know difficulties with difficulty, but for the moment. Uh, I am adequately challenged without enough upgrades, at least. It's not just, you know, me running around aimlessly killing shit. I have to be somewhat purposeful with my movement. Which is always a good sign. I think we'll go for my spears. I would love my ability to go off cooldown right now. There we go. This should go down pretty quickly. We get upgrades and then we just charge through the group of enemies on the left. Wow, yeah, that, that was definitely worth it. Charge through all these guys, grab as much XP as we can. And some health on the way. This run has definitely lasted longer than my other run. Um, how do I see what wave we're on? Level 25, top left. You can also press escape to figure out statistics and, and things like that um probably a little bit to understand on this page um for example forest one you can see that it's got a rank there skulls from one through to looks like 12 or 11 or something like that so maybe that's a difficulty increase you can achieve but for now we are on skull one Wave 10. So I believe this is the last wave, and then after this, there should be a boss. Let's go for... Yeah, bigger orbs with a longer duration. Keep me covered as much as possible. While I tear through these enemies. There's a couple objectives bottom right I might go for. Bottom right and directly below me as well. We'll just see what they are. Ah, yeah, they're the power-ups. So this one freezes enemies. Used this one earlier on in the run. Uh, I don't actually know if you can run into enemies and be invulnerable. Looks like you probably can. Here's my ability to run through these guys. Be fully safe. Have a watermelon as well. There is also an ability... Or an upgrade, sorry. Or an ability, sorry. Yeah, definitely an ability that uh, consumes all the XP orbs. Is that a red XP orb? It's just... Uh, well, that's kind of what I was talking about, I guess. But that looked like more of a random drop than, than something that actually came from an enemy. Regardless, let's see if we can run closer towards these uh, upgrades. Final wave. Here's the boss. I wonder if I just froze the boss, actually. Where is it? Down here. Got some friends with him this time as well. Gotta be careful of those. So I'm gonna have to target my spears while simultaneously avoiding these enemies. Hopefully my um, ability comes up pretty soon so I can just kind of run through this. 
because I feel like this might get too overwhelming if it doesn't. Yeah, I'm really going to need my ability here. I could also run right to grab that power up and hopefully it's like a, a f another freeze or an insta-kill or something like that. But for the moment, run straight into him. He's the closest enemy as well, so my axes should be hitting him. Uh, that didn't do too much, unfortunately. So what I might do is actually just run right and see what this... Well, maybe I could stay. It's just a bit difficult to target him with my spears at the same time as I manage my survival elsewhere. Although I seem to be... I seem to have enough health, I guess. Yeah, I don't need to run right. I can probably just kill him here. It's just a little bit tanky. Much, much tankier than the boss in the graveyard that I, I burst last run. Much tankier. But not tanky enough, I don't think. Not tanky enough. Probably get another upgrade if I wanted to, but I think I might just focus on damaging him. And there we go. Victory. And obviously... As uh, you will with the with a new game, you unlock a shitload of achievements as soon as you finish one run. Uh, a lot of unlock challenges for me as well. I don't think all of these are related to achievements, but definitely some of them are. So there's that, and I got a decent amount of gold to go with it as well. And obviously you can see uh, how much damage each of your things caused. So you can see that throwing axe was pretty good to me that game. Same was the same with the trident and the spears. So yeah, very good. Shows you your unlocks as well, which is nice. I got a bunch of those actually. God damn. And then yeah, it just I mean it's those aren't levels. They're just you know they increase with all the numbers, and then it gives you some recommended challenges to complete uh, that you're kind of close to completing at least. So yeah, that's Army of Ruin. Um, I feel like there's probably a lot to do here, and while it may be easy, I'm sure there's some there's, there's a good enough challenge in here for you to complete. Um, I've just noticed actually that uh, there's challenges for each of these, which is uh, or stars at least for each of these uh, maps. So there you go, things to complete as well, more things to complete. So yep, that was Army of Ruin. Uh, honestly, decent amount of fun, and I'm sure. If you're into this art style, if you're into these kind of games, then you can probably get a decent amount of playtime out of it. I've never heard of it as well, so for it to come straight to me into 1.0 uh, out of early access or whatever it was in uh, is a pretty good deal. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.